Hi, Internet and Casey. This is Melly with 25 and 52. Um, today, I wanted to actually follow up on one of my previous videos where I talked about uh, breast cancer genetics mostly um, because the decision about whether the breast cancer BRCA genes are patentable, rather, and whether genes in general are patentable, just finished up recently, and I figured I would help that along and tell you about it. So apparently this company, Myriad Genetics, had the patents for 15 years. There was a lot of contention over that time, and now the Supreme Court has ruled that uh, genes as they are in the human body are not patentable. So basically the decision says that isolated human DNA is not patentable, but cDNA is. Now cDNA is um, basically, so DNA is two strands, right? While when it's being read to be turned into a, a protein, right, when a gene's being read, you know, it unzips, and then this, this protein goes by and is like, da -da 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 and spits out this complementary RNA, right? Um, cDNA, I believe, is made off of that RNA. Um, and the Supreme Court decided that because that process itself doesn't happen in nature, really, there's no, then, then it's patentable because it's technically not naturally occurring. I still don't like this, but I see what they're saying, and uh, in my mind, the most important part, that being that the just straight up copied human DNA is not patentable, ended up how I personally wanted to. So really the um, important, or what they decided was important, uh, reason that the cDNA is patentable is because it doesn't have the non-coding regions. It's basically post-RNA editing. It's the version, <clears throat> it's pretty much the version that turns directly into a protein. Um, so DNA goes from this to unzipped to doo -doo -doo -doo, this, right? This is the RNA. Uh, and then there's like, you know, there's weird editing that happens here. Huge chunks, whole chunks get sort of taken out before before RNA, right? And then we're going to call this the amino acids protein. This ribosome goes down and makes the protein strand that then gets jumbled up, hooray! And then you have protein, and that's what does stuff, usually. Um, basically, since there is that level of editing between the DNA, which is not patentable, and the RNA that turns directly into the protein, um, DNA that you make from the RNA that turns into the protein can be patented and Myriad Genetics and all these other companies, um, their patents on them are upheld. Apparently I uh, put together all my biology related ideas into the same video, so I apologize if you are real not into hearing me talk about science, which I don't know why, it comes with the best hand gestures. It's a terrible way to lead into this next story, but I'm going to roll with it. I saw this other cool article fairly recently called The Dolphin Rape Myth, um, which talks about, in, I think you'd be interested because in, it talks about in some detail how the things that are generally characterized as rape in the animal, non-human animal kingdom, uh, non-human members of the animal kingdom, are really not analogous to how rape happens in our society. Um, and that's when it actually happens. Dolphins are singled out as an example here because they don't really rape, which, you know, is great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, um, but there's some dominance behaviors that sort of look like uh, sex, even though there's not actually any sex sex involved. Um, it's not really copulatory. Not sure if that's a word. Anyway, um, the article basically says, uh, the, the big part of it that resonated with me anyway, is that calling all these different behaviors rape just really trivializes human-to-human -human rape. Uh, because it's not the same thing, sorry, toaster oven, it's not the same thing in human cultural context as it is in dolphin or what have you, other contexts. What else do I want to talk about today? Hurts. Hurts.